Guys, it is Raiders week. There are some big ideas worth following in this game, and we will follow those up with a breakdown of the game and finally a prediction for the final score. So what are we looking at? What are the big ideas at play as the Chiefs uh, are taking on the Raiders this weekend? Well, number one, I think handle it, right? There was the whole kerfuffle this preseason with Kermit talking about how um, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs, that... And Mahomes followed this up by saying uh, it'll get handled when it gets handled. So the emotions in this game are going to be very, very high, despite the fact that the Raiders season is on the verge of being mathematically over. And the Kansas City Chiefs are the final undefeated team in the league. The Vikings falling for the second time just last night. So, um, the emotions will be high. This is getting back to being a rivalry. And as such, the number two idea there, this is the last team that beat the Kansas City Chiefs, these Raiders on Christmas Day. That much has been talked about ad nauseum. One thing that hasn't quite been talked about as much is the fact that in addition to winning 12 straight games, we're looking at a calendar year not too far from now. This is today. October 26th. It was December 25th that the Chiefs fell for the final time last season. This is an incredible run on which the Kansas City Chiefs find themselves, and they have the motivation to go out there and finish off the Raiders, despite the fact that I think the Raiders will be maybe at the beginning of the game. Maybe Look, I'm going to pick the Kansas City Chiefs. You know I'm going to pick the Kansas City Chiefs. Would it be surprising for the Raiders to pull off the upset? Well, it would be the most NFL thing ever. And we've got another idea that is the most NFL thing ever coming up when the Raiders run the football. But number three here, the chance to move to 7-0 and means basically mathematically you are in the playoffs. It is very rare for a team to fall off after being 7-0. and I, In fact, so rare that I don't know any numbers on it. I'm sure they exist. I'm sure there have been teams that go 7-0 and and miss the playoffs. The Eagles last year got to 11-0. and Is that what it was before falling and then fell early in the playoffs? So it does not mean you were going to the Super Bowl, but at that point, if you get to 7-0, and you have 10 opportunities to win three games because 10-7 and normally just about gets you into the playoffs. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and then there was another comment this past week that no one fears Patrick Mahomes. So the emotions will be high on both sides of the ball. No, the Raiders no longer have Devontae Adams. No, the Raiders haven't won very many games, but guys, they get paid too, and they have their pride as well. So there will be a lot on the line for both teams. Uh, and basically the main thing for both of these teams that will be on the line is pride. The number five big idea here, the Raiders' season-high scoring is 26 points, which they put up on the Ravens. The uh, most they have surrendered is 36 points to the Panthers. This is a confusing football team. They are scoring points on the Ravens, but nobody else. They are giving up points to the Panthers, and they've given up points a couple times, but nothing crazy. No, I, I do not believe. So obviously they've never given up. They haven't given up 40, uh, but I think the next highest was 32. I don't remember who they were playing. Maybe that was the Steelers game, but 32 points and 36 points as the high scores against the Raiders. So there are some uh, very strange things going on here, but what are we talking about when the Kansas City Chiefs have the ball? Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard, however you pronounce it, Chuba Hubbard, 21 carries and 114 yards against the Raiders. Najee Harris went 14 carries, 106 yards, and J.K. Dobbins went 10 carries for 135. Those are all three of the 100-plus yard days to have been given up by the Raiders this season, and all three of those guys are bigger, stronger, power-back type runners. Well, so is Kareem Hunt. So is Samad J.P. Ryan. So is Carson Steele. The Kansas City Chiefs have the backs to which the Raiders' defense is normally susceptible. Uh, also, Kareem Hunt has been effective. 
this season on the Kansas City Chiefs, but he is starting to wear the bumps and bruises for his efforts. He was limited on Monday and on Monday and Tuesday. Is that what the or Tuesday and Wednesday? That what the practices were? Anyway, the the first two days of the week he was limited with a hip which is not a promising sign, but maybe they are just the bumps and bruises that go along with playing in the NFL. Then he had, uh, he's, he's had a heavy load the past two games, uh, 22 for 78 and two touchdowns. And then before that versus new Orleans, 27 for 102 and one touchdown. I expect him to have a bit of a, a lighter load this game. Now, If he does have a lighter load, what does that look like? Because the Kansas City Chiefs will still be putting a running back on the field. I do not foresee any empty backfields in their future. The game, in my opinion, will be chippy and competitive in the first half. That is when the emotions will will take over for both teams. And eventually, I think the Chiefs start to pull ahead. So I imagine that while the game is chippy, while the game is competitive, you put the the tried hand on the field of Samaj P. Ryan as the number two running back until things start to develop some breathing space, and then we might see some time for Carson Steele to shine. Then number three, the, the, the Raiders' defense seems to struggle with speed, seems to struggle with speed all over the field, so I imagine Mikol and Xavier will both get a couple of carries off of motion, and the upside to these players getting carries off of motion is that it will put the Raiders' safeties in a blender as well, and we will get back to the Raiders' safeties in just a moment. What about when the Kansas City Chiefs pass? Well, the Raiders gave up 319 yards and three touchdowns to Andy Dalton which included eight receptions and 122 yards with a touchdown to Deontay Johnson. The way they did this, this was against the Panthers, a lot of passes, 10 to 20 yards downfield. There were a lot of passes around the middle of the field. I think that what this means for the Kansas City Chiefs, look, Patrick Mahomes is better than Andy Dalton, and I think that when you start looking at the speed profile on the Chiefs, it is better than the speed profile on Deontay Johnson. I think that the speed between McCole Hardman and Xavier Worthy is going to give this Raiders defense some fits. I think if we start to get a few more of those stoppability type routes from Xavier Worthy. It could mean all the difference in this game. Xavier Worthy going 15 yards and hitching. That could be disaster for this Raiders defense. Also, in addition to that, look for routes that cross the center's face, dragging across the field. Isaiah Polamau is big, six foot four, two hundred and four pounds, and has some speed at four five one. And Trayvon Morig is six foot one, two hundred and two pounds, with a four five two forty yard dash. Th- they've got size, they've got some skills, but Polamau is struggling in pass coverage. He's been targeted eight times this season, given up eight completions for 67 yards and a 101.6 rating. Morig is struggling even worse. He's been targeted uh, 15 times. I got those numbers confused. 15 times, given up 13 completions for 133 yards and 115.4 rating when targeted. I think that the safeties could be a deciding factor in this game. Also, when you start to look at the actuality on the field, how teams are getting or extending drives against the Raiders, I think that Hunt and Pirine could be productive on receptions. This is, again, getting back to the idea of the safeties having to be involved in the passing game for the Raiders. Floating Hunt and Pirine out into the flats could be a good way to pick up five and six yards. It's not going to look like a whole lot at the after the final whistle, but it's going to be one of these things that allows the Kansas City Chiefs to hold on to the ball, to maintain drives, and to keep moving. I If Kareem Hunt has 
four receptions for 25 yards, and Samaj J.P. Ryan has two receptions for 15 yards. That will be a bigger deal in this game than it would otherwise seem. Well, what about when the Raiders have the ball? When the Raiders run Alexander Madison, 69 carries for 250 yards and three touchdowns with a 3.6 yard average this season, he reminds me a lot of Daryl Williams. Not a bad piece, but not someone you want to have to depend on. There is a very, very fine line between a starting running back and a good running back in the NFL. Alexander Madison seems to be a guy that I think is not a starter at the NFL level. I think he would be a good number two running back. He's not a bell cow. The Chiefs have surrendered one. 100-yard rusher this season, and it was not a running back. It was Lamar Jackson with 122 yards. But they are routinely holding opposing number one running backs to 30 to f- between 30 and 50 yards. This is a monster defense against the run. And honestly, guys, I don't know how heading into the season I would never have expected that. So. Number three here, I said we would get to this. The most outrageous outcome for this game is that the the Raiders go off for 200 yards rushing. So that might be what happens. It's weird. So in the NFL, you can predict or forecast some things some of the time. But any time that you say, well, this definitely won't happen, that's what happens. And the Raiders running for 200 yards and having a 100-yard day out of their starting running back would be the one thing if I looked at this profile and said, that's not going to happen, right? Gardner Minshew has had good games in the NFL before. Jacoby Myers has had good games in the NFL before. Brock Bowers looks to be a game-changing type individual. You could imagine their passing game having a little bit of traction in this game if a couple different things go their way. But the running backs, I could not imagine that. I think often what happens in these situations, actually, is that the, for example, the Chiefs defense would know it's very unlikely that the Raiders go off for 200 yards rushing on us. So they spend all week focusing on the passing game. And what happens is they're from the the running game is de-emphasized in their coaching sessions and they slack a little bit around the edges. So what about when the Raiders pass? Anytime you lose a guy like Devontae Adams, you're going to take a step back. It's not going to be great. But I didn't know this before I started looking into it. Devontae Adams was fourth on the Raiders in receiving yards with 209. Brock Bowers had 477. Jacoby Myers, 273. And Trey Tucker, with 226. So, yeah, losing Devontae Adams is not going to help your offense as far as the defensive scheme is concerned, but he was not the deciding factor as far as uh, he was not be- he was not very good for the Raiders this year. Trent McDuffie versus Jacoby Myers, who is questionable, will be the big matchup for the Chiefs. Myers has the size advantage at 6 foot 2 200 pounds but he only ran a 463 40 yard dash. Now Trent McDuffie is not the fastest guy, he will never be the fastest guy on the field, but he definitely has serviceable speed for a cornerback and if that is the matchup Trent McDuffie versus Jacoby Myers, I 100% expect Trent McDuffie to be the victor in that situation. Again, I don't think that they're necessarily going to have McDuffie follow him around the field. I think they're more going to play their defense, and the Raiders will be trying to scheme up Jacoby versus the other corner, whoever that ends up being, um, for the Raiders. So, the big the big deal for the Chiefs defense this game is going to be how will the Chiefs defense decide to defend Brock Bowers? He's not a massive tight end. He's not a very big guy. He's six foot four and two hundred and thirty pounds. Basically, that's Calvin Johnson. But he's getting more attention in the offense as the season goes on and becoming more reliable. The last three weeks, he had Denver. 8 catches, 97 yards, Pittsburgh, 9 catches, 71 yards, and the Los Angeles Rams, 10 catches, 93 yards. I honestly do not have a read as far as how the Kansas City Chiefs are going to play this 
uh, going forward in this game? Is Are they going to use linebackers or safeties to cover Brock Bowers? I don't know. Um, b- but I do think that they, they are a little bit vulnerable versus tight ends in general. So how they decide to do this, if they can shut out Brock Bowers in the first half, this game could get pretty ugly pretty fast. Now, Minshew went 15 of 34 for 154 yards and three interceptions versus the Rams last week with a rating of 21.0. Did not have a good game. Minshew is a guy that is going to, he's never going to tantalize anyone, but he's going as he has thus far in his career, given enough people enough ideas that maybe he can do this if he can just cut out some of the stupid stuff, and he's not cut out the stupid stuff, the three interceptions. It is difficult to foresee him having a repeat of that performance just because the law of averages in the NFL, just because Minshew was kind of thrown back into the mix there, all of these things... I don't think he's going to have a game that bad again. So what is my final prediction for this game? Chiefs 33, Raiders 17. I think it's going to be competitive in the first half. I think these teams will be feeling each other out. Remember, they do have to play each other again this season. And I think that the idea of vengeance is going to be too strong a motivating factor for the Kansas City Chiefs. The idea of moving to 7-0 and o is going to be too big an idea for the Kansas City Chiefs, while and whereas the idea of I hate the Kansas City Chiefs is going to be the prominent factor for the Raiders, which is not an idea that necessarily drives you towards a victory. It is just something that gets you to play hard. It won't make you play smart. It will just make you give a little extra effort. It may even make you draw a couple penalties. The big worry in this game is going to be health. In a game that is going to be so negatively charged, where the other team has so very little to lose, what can the Kansas City Chiefs do to mitigate injuries? Oftentimes, what you see is passing. Because the wide receiver can get down without much contact, the quarterback can get rid of the ball before he is hit, and the uh, the way that you pass block is less contact intensive than running the football. Running the football is a good way to get all five of your offensive linemen injured as long as well as your halfback. So oftentimes, when a when a team is in sort of safety mode, they will kill the clock through short completions with getting their wide receivers to the ground, get to the first down marker, don't take any risks, don't expose yourself. The wild part of this is the Kansas City Chiefs weakness as far as injuries and exposure are concerned is at the wide receiver position. So it may be that we do see the Kansas City Chiefs try to grind out the running game in uh, against the Raiders in order to bring this one home. That is all I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other Kansas City Chiefs fans. And if you find yourself here by chance but not designed, the Chiefs are the only thing I talk about on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week. And I hope to have you back for the next one.